Nathan, it's Monday, April 14th. And may I just remind you that it is exactly one month until your birthday? You and I both have birthdays in May, and one thing we love about that is that we always have beautiful weather. But with this warmer weather comes rain. And lots of it. Like yesterday, when it pretty much rained all day with random bouts of lightning and thunder. Look here, I got a video of the rain yesterday in case some of you haven't ever seen rain before. Look at that rain, it is wet and kind of loud and sometimes I go out in it in my boots but not this time really because I'm holding the camera and I don't want to get it wet. Rainy time, ooh, there was some thunder. So yesterday I'm standing there like, huh, why does it rain so much in the springtime? Maybe the clouds are celebrating the warmer weather and they're just like partying a lot and but oh no, they broke the seal and now they're peeing all over us like all day just pissing rain all over us. And so I thought, well, where do I go to find the answers to all of my science questions? The internet! The place where answers are given to you via click-through slides of a single sentence. Who the F is Hank? Hank Green is, click, 80 million years old and, click, has a 3,000 mile long, click, range. Hank has high peaks and resides, click, in British Columbia, Alberta, Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, click, and New Mexico. And there are also places like Yahoo Answers. Oh, Yahoo Answers. So I read online about evaporation and the characteristics of springtime and arranged the information to learn about all the precipitation. Get it? A uh, rain? Alright, so during the winter the moisture in the ground is frozen and it won't let it go, let it go. Do I like suck for not seeing that movie yet? I feel like Nathan, we like really need to see that movie. Anyway, the light from the sun isn't warm enough so not enough of the molecules evaporate off from the surface of the ground, as you can see in these high-tech graphic of water molecules leaving, leaving the ground, that's the ground. Temperature and kinetic energy of water are proportional, so the higher the temperature, the more energy the water molecules have, making more of them better able to GTFO of the ground. In the winter, the rate of molecule escape is low, keeping our air very, very dry. But once our hemisphere starts tilting back toward the sun and the days get warmer, there's suddenly a crap load of molecules with enough kinetic energy to leave the surface of the ground, enter the atmosphere, and group together to form clouds. As these clouds gather more and more evaporated water vapor, they eventually reach a point where the water vapor has clumped together enough to reform into a liquid, and that falls as rain. So after two days of having above 80 degree weather for the first time this season, it makes sense that enough water vapor evaporated from the ground and we had rain yesterday. Rain becomes less frequent in the summertime because we don't have as huge reserves of trapped moisture in the ground. So I'm going to let you guys take the reins of my research and tell me why it rains so much in the rainforest. Nathan, we'll see you on Wednesday. So yesterday I'm standing there like, huh, why does it rain so much in the springtime? Maybe God has really bad allergies and it's just a snot and tears raining down on us like an outpouring of mucus and he's all like, sorry guys, I would go to the doctor and get allergy medicine, but I had trouble signing up for healthcare on the Affordable Care Act's website. Thanks, Obama. Just a reminder, tomorrow is the last day for the extension to sign up for the Affordable Care Act and it's also tax day. So hopefully all of you guys have gotten on that.